Hi, I'm here at Mondragon. We're on the third floor at the Rudolph Rocker Center. It's September the 2nd and I am interviewing Jamie Campbell. So, Jamie, how long have you worked at Mondragon? Uh, two answers to that question. I moved to Winnipeg from BC March 28th, 2005. Interviewed at Mondragon. Um, started my first shift two days later. Uh, and I was at Mondragon until May 26th, 2010, um, and then went on a bit of a hiatus and came back again in uh, January of this year. So I guess one answer would be more than eight years. <laughs> the alternate answer would be five point something. <laughs> five point something. That's great. Uh, so uh, what have you found has been the best part of working at Mondragon? The thing I like best about Mondragon is it gives members the opportunity to make the space their own. You, um, the, the best way to be at Mondragon is to find an area that you can really sink your teeth into and improve Mondragon for everyone, while at the same time also improving it for yourself, create sort of a, a symbiotic relationship and uh, really it provides an environment that allows people to, to challenge themselves to increase their skills in areas, but also to nurture the strengths they already have. That's great. And can I ask what uh, area that's been for you? Uh, for me, um, I think a lot of people have the perception <laughs> that the area I love the most is finance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in reality, the area I love the most, I think, would be doing um, systems improvement. Mm -hmm. um, monkeying with the tail to add features mm -hmm. and uh, and improving other computer areas. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of the challenges that you have faced working at Mondragon? I think probably the archetypal challenge at Mondragon is uh, expect the unexpected. <laughs> so um, you need to constantly have in mind um, what you might do in different circumstances because yeah. Almost anything you can think of that might happen at some point probably will happen. <laughs> probably has. <laughs> <It> probably has. <laughs> yeah, Mondragon, expect the unexpected. Yes. To your tagline. Yes. <laughs> uh, so how can Mondragon best serve the community? Like how has it served the community in the past and how can it best serve the community? I, in some ways, I think of Mondragon kind of like um, one of those fantastic machines where you pull a little cord and all sorts of stuff starts happening. There's, uh, Mondragon is, I think, the linchpin for a lot of other initiatives that have uh, been inspired by Mondragon or directly uh, pulled policies from Mondragon to start new co-ops. Um, I think that we've been excellent in supporting other initiatives in the community in, in a variety of different ways. Um, I think that we have had members um, who actually work in, in other projects mm -hmm. thanks to the fact that Mondragon is, is able to be their, their core. Yeah. So for instance, uh, for me, um, with, with Mondragon as my base, I'm also able to help out with um, the national board for the CWCF. Uh, I am able to represent to the Worker Council, be on the A-Zone co-ops board, data commons board, there's there's a whole variety of initiatives that if I wasn't a member of Mondragon, I'm not really sure that I would be able to do those things. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a really good example, I think. I think you have used Mondragon as well as a base like that, mm -hmm. and then have done all sorts of projects from there. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say is the ideal Mondragon? What does that look like to you? For me? The ideal Mondragon would be a Mondragon that is evolved and honed to the point where uh, we're not just sort of a general inspiration for new co-ops. Like we, we've gotten to the point where a lot of our policies can just be directly recycled, but we're not quite to the point yet where um, we're kind of at a cookie cut cutter level where people can literally do everything we've done and um, immediately come up with success. So I'd love to see us get to a point where all of our systems are 
improved as far as they can be improved. We've, we've got uh, our space um, where we're growing all our own herbs, mm -hmm. sort of as, as, as an example for, mm -hmm. for the local foods initiative. Mm -hmm. Have all of our members very deeply vested in um, various community and cooperative projects. So at the moment, um, I don't think we've got to the point where um, everyone working at Mondragon has has advanced to be a permanent member with ties to a whole bunch of community projects. So I'd love to see us get to almost, um, and it's 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 a bit of a challenge because as the fact that we are a, a restaurant cafe. The industry has a lot of turnover, so I'm a bit of a dreamer on this, but I would love to see the collective stabilize so that everyone is here mm -hmm. long enough to mm -hmm. uh, really have an impact on our community. Yeah, that's great. Well, you and I have been here for a long time, so maybe other people will too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great, Jamie. Thanks a lot. Do you have anything else to, to add to our interview? Uh, I would add that um, I think that Mondragon is at its strongest if not just the members of the collective are doing their best, but also if members of the community um, would like to get involved and, and see a piece of themselves. I mentioned near the beginning of the interview that for members, the, the best strategy is um, going to their strengths and finding a place for themselves at Mondragon. I think the same is true of the community. So. Anyone who would like to see changes and improvements to Mondragon, we are very receptive uh, to that and would love to hear from people and um, facilitate things that people would like to see. Well, that's great. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.